and welcome to Wish It Old Parish Church with myself, Jade Ableitner, leading you in worship this morning. We come together to worship our loving and gracious God, who tells each of us that we are his beloved children. Let us still our hearts and minds before God. Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 32, When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. Blessed be the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Let us sing together. Hymn 503, I will offer up my life in spirit and in truth.
Let us come before God now in prayer. Father, we have come to see you, wanting to follow in your footprints, wishing to be changed to live out a new life in you. We come before you in worship from our different homes, our different situations, and yet united in our love for you. Lord, you are the Good Shepherd, gathering us into your loving embrace. God, you have invited us into your family through the cross. There is nothing we can do that can earn that place. You have saved us with your endless grace. You have written your ways on our minds and on our hearts. For you are our God and we are your people. Lord, you are the Good Shepherd, gathering us into your loving embrace. Lord, you have called us to put you before all. You have asked that we serve you alone. You have promised us that when we live our lives for you, there you will be, right beside us. Yet, God, the world tempts us to want to put ourselves first. Our heads have been turned to think our worth comes from our status, our career, our wealth, or popularity. We have gone off course, Father, from walking in your footprints, from receiving your blessing and blessing others. Forgive us, Father. As we come to see you today, forgive our sins and remember no wrongs, for you, the Lord, have spoken. Lord, you are the Good Shepherd, gathering us into your loving embrace. We need you, Lord. We need you to show us the way. We need you to help us to be the light advancing your kingdom right here on earth. Equip us, Father, by the Holy Spirit so that we can be the hope, directing others home, showing them the way into life everlasting, out from the darkness and into the light. Help us to glorify your name with our lives, Father. You love us without condition, Help us to love our neighbour without expectation. For your ways are the only way to full and everlasting life. Lord, you are the good shepherd, gathering us into your loving embrace. Now we say the words our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. Boys and girls, it's Jade. I hope you're doing well. And you know what, boys and girls? I am looking forward to the day when I can all see you in person again. And perhaps you've been able this week to see your teachers and your friends from school when you've been able to go into the classroom. And I hope that's been fantastic. Well, I've been doing these little mini teachings with you all from my own house because I can't be there in person with you. But I'm wondering if the last few weeks you've been seeing some of the things behind me. Well, of course, I've shown you my pottery and even this little birdie that I was telling you is from America. But have you noticed something that's always been lying at the bottom of this vase on this little table? Can I show you it? Okay, let me see. 
this, boys and girls, you wouldn't have been able to see all the pretty pattern on it, but you would have seen that there was something wooden. If I show you that up close, can you see all the pretty design? Wow, each little dot is done by paint and it creates this pretty pattern. But do you know what this is? This is a boomerang. It's kind of like a frisbee, I guess, that you can throw it in the wind. But something really special about a boomerang is that it comes back to you. So when I've been playing frisbee in the past, well, sometimes I can't even throw it to the person I'm trying to reach. But this boomerang comes back to you. It's a skill. And there's something else that I have. Can you see it? Right in the corner there. Come on, we'll go and get it. This item is quite big, boys and girls. It's just going to fit in the vision there of this camera. <laughs> this is also wooden, but it's very, very large. It's more narrow at the top and it's wider at the bottom. And it's very, very long. But again, do you see all the pretty patterns done in paint? And look, there's a big old lizard there. Wow! Do you know what this is, boys and girls? Can you guess? It's pretty difficult, isn't it? You don't see one of these every day. This, boys and girls, is a didgeridoo. <laughs> That's a funny name, that one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a didgeridoo, and it's actually a wooden trumpet. Shall I play it? <laughs> I have no idea how to play this, boys and girls. It's a skill. But you know what? I may as well give it a go. Let's see. I'm not sure it's meant to sound like that, boys and girls. <laughs> and I think I've just frightened my dog. But this is a didgeridoo. And there are some really talented people that can play it. So maybe that's something that you can look up on the internet later. But this is a didgeridoo and this is a boomerang and both are from a country right around the world on the other side called, can you guess? If you haven't already got it, it's where kangaroos come from and koala bears, where is it? It's Australia, that's right boys and girls. These items are from a place called Australia. And when I was younger, I used to live in a country right next to it called New Zealand. And my family and I went on holiday to Australia and that's where we got these items. So these are from all the way around the other side of the world. And over there, boys and girls, these things are quite common. The boomerang and the didgeridoo, well, they're very different to us, aren't they? Maybe at school you play I don't know, the keyboard, maybe the drums, maybe the flute, clarinet. We have some talented people at Wish at Old I Know. So perhaps you can even sing as well. That's an instrument that you can use and you can show everyone your gift that God has given you and we can all enjoy it. But in Australia, there's people just like you and I that can play this, the didgeridoo, and they can throw this, the boomerang, and that's normal to them. There's nothing quite unusual about that. That's a special gift that they have and that they share with others too. In fact, over in Australia, boys and girls, do you know what time it is right now over there? It's 11 hours forward. So look at your watches just now, or your mums and dads or guardians, and try and work out what time it is over there. I can tell you something, it's probably a lot later than what you're doing right now. You're probably having your breakfast or your lunch. Well, they might even be sleeping at this point. It's pretty cool, isn't it, to think that boys and girls, just like you and I, are doing something completely different all the way around the other side of the world. And in fact, whilst you're maybe going to school or nursery and you're having to put your jacket on and I've had to put my cardigan on in the house, well, actually, it's autumn over in Australia, but it's still very, very warm. This is a time when a lot of us visitors that maybe are tourists going on holiday to a place like Australia, we would usually go now because we can't handle it when it gets more hot than it is right now. In fact, it's so sunny right now that 
you wouldn't need a cardigan or a jacket. It would be what we would consider our summer weather. So boys and girls over there will be going to school in shorts and t-shirts. Oh, that's a nice thought, isn't it? Maybe one day we can do the same when it's a lot warmer. But for now, we wear our cardigans and we wear our jackets. But what I want to discuss today, boys and girls, is how awesome it is that no matter where we are in the world, that we all have this one thing in common. And do you know what it is? It's, of course, God. If we go to our Bibles, I've got my nice pink bookmark to show me where, and go to John. So the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and go to verse 26. I'm going to read it for you. It says, Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that my servant will be with me where I am, and my father will honour anyone who serves me. Huh, whoever wants to serve me must follow me. So, does that mean all the way around the other side of the world where other bo boys and girls are too? Or does that mean they have to come all the way around here and maybe go to church with us? No! It doesn't. That's what's so awesome. We are all so different, aren't we? We come from different countries. We have different accents and we're doing different things. And we have all these amazing, awesome gifts. But that's what's so wonderful because God is saying here that whenever you trust in God, Whenever you're praying to God, you're reading your Bible and you want to put him first, which means that you want to love him above anyone and anything. Then God says, you know where I am? I'm right here next to you. And that may mean next to someone in Australia, next to someone in Germany or in America and in Scotland. It's amazing because we worship this God, this awesome God that's with every single person who tells God that they love him because he loves them so much that he wants to walk beside us. It's amazing. And do you know what, boys and girls? It's amazing to think all the wonderful things that we have in front of us as we look forward to the future with God right beside us. So I would like us all to sing along very soon an awesome, fun song from an organisation called Fishy Music. But first, boys and girls, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you show us how awesome you are, that you are everywhere, that you are in everything and that you are with everyone. It's amazing to learn of all the different countries, the different cultures, the different things that people are doing from us. And we just think it's amazing all these gifts that you share for each of your beloved children everywhere in the world. Please, Lord, help us to enjoy the fact that you are with us each and every step of the way, no matter where we go, or no matter where we are. We love you, God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to sing this awesome song. You might not know it, but you know what? You're going to pick up the chorus very, very quickly. I and mean, then it's never going to leave you because I've been singing it all day. It's called Jesus Walks Beside Us in Scotland. <laughs> Enjoy, boys and girls. See you later. <laughs> By the banks and the breeze, by the macker and the bogs, on the roads and the paths of Scotland, on the islands and the hills, in the forests and the fields, in the crannies and the nooks of Scotland. Wherever we come from, wherever we're going, Jesus walks beside us in Scotland. Whatever we're facing, 
Whatever we're feeling Jesus walks beside us in Scotland In the schools and the jails In the castles and the crofts In the shops and the schemes Of Scotland In the stadiums and kirks In the villages and towns In the bingos and the chip shops Of Scotland Wherever we come from Wherever we're going Jesus walks beside us in Scotland Whatever we're facing Whatever we're feeling Jesus walks beside us in Scotland and the downs, in the yeses and the noes, in the twists and the turns of Scotland, in the old and the new, in the haves and the nots, in the dreech and the dry of Scotland. Wherever we come from, wherever we're going, Jesus walks beside us in Scotland Whatever we're facing Whatever we're feeling Jesus walks beside us in Scotland Wherever we come from Wherever we're going Jesus walks beside us in Scotland Whatever we're facing, whatever we're feeling, Jesus walks beside us in Scotland. First reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34. The Lord says, The time is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Although I was like a husband to them, they did not keep that covenant. The new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel will be this. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. None of them will have to teach a neighbour to know the Lord because all will know me from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their sins and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, the Lord, have spoken. Our second reading is taken from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Some Greeks seek Jesus. Some Greeks were amongst those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth, a grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain until it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. 
Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am and my father will honour anyone who serves me. Jesus speaks about his death. Now my heart is troubled and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me but that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it, and will, I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, while others said an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, it was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. Amen, and thanks be to God. Our next hymn is hymn... 557 O love that wilt not let me go Yesterday was the first official day of spring and spring is my favourite time of the year. I think it's because it's a season I most appreciate, going from the colder days to the more milder ones, from the darker nights to the lighter ones and seeing the bare trees now with new signs of life and of course the buds begin to bloom in our gardens. It's the season I most appreciate because it's a season that brings about new opportunity. From the colder months that we have left behind, from the darkness and into the light. In many ways, I feel like we're all coming out of a time of darkness. From a period of exactly one year 
of being in a global pandemic, we can now see the light at the end of the tunnel, with even some in our community scheduled for their second COVID-19 vaccination. But it has been a journey, hasn't it? And whilst it's a journey we have all faced together, we have not all been in the same boat. We have all, of course, been affected by the restrictions put in place for over a year now. However, while some have had to fight off COVID-19, others haven't experienced it. And while some have lost family members or friends to COVID-19, others haven't. But what we can all do together on Tuesday is remember. Tuesday the 23rd of March marks the first anniversary of the UK lockdown. At 7pm that day, if you're able to, safely light a candle to remember those who have lost their lives this past year to COVID-19. Those who are far more than just a statistic, each a precious child of God. As Christians, we each have the responsibility to be a light, bringing hope to all need in God's image. When Jesus died on the cross, he sacrificed his own life for the sake of the world. And as he invites us to come and see, we have the responsibility to give up our own self-seeking ways, choosing instead to serve and follow Jesus. In our Old Testament reading today of Jeremiah chapter 31, the Lord says in verse 33, The new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel will be like this. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. That, you see, is how we will be known to be Christ followers. When we come into his family, we are changed by him within. Jesus journeys now alongside us and it can be seen in our lives by our actions. And that invitation to be changed by Christ in our minds and in our hearts is for anyone and everyone. In our Gospel reading from John chapter 12 verses 20 to 33, the Greeks who want to speak to Jesus are in fact the Gentiles. The description Greeks was used to describe those who were not Jewish and here Gentile. Gentiles were not part of the covenanted people but here they are in our text today, curious about Jesus, asking Philip and Andrew if they can see him. Now, you can't help but wonder what these particular Gentiles had heard about Jesus. What gossip had passed their ears about this wonderful man? What encouraged them to go in search of Jesus so that they could see him for themselves? Perhaps they had heard all about Jesus in the temple, overturning the tables, cleansing the area, the only area that the Gentiles were able to enter into and pray to God, ensuring that this was not a marketplace, but a respectful place for the Gentiles to be with God. Whatever the case, these Gentiles were those out with the covenant, that Jesus had now come to bring into his fold, those he came to give his life for. Jesus says in John chapter 10, verses 14 to 16, I 
am the good shepherd. As the Father knows me and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep and they know me, and I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Jesus would sacrifice his life so that all could now be in his family, where he would be written on their minds and on their hearts. We read today that the Greeks, the Gentiles, wanted to see Jesus in verse 21. The verbs to come and see appear in John's Gospel no less than 84 times. They are a formula for discipleship. To come and to see is an invitation to follow Christ to believe in him and to walk in his ways. And so the Gentiles here, they weren't just wanting to physically see Jesus for themselves, but they wanted to be part of his flock. That is why Jesus replies in verse 23, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. Jesus would be the new covenant between man and God, where all who believe in him would be part of his family, Jew and Gentile. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 we read, For Christ himself has brought us peace by making Jews and Gentiles one people. With his own body he broke down the wall that separated them and kept them enemies. Jesus goes on in our gospel reading today to tell a parable to Philip and Andrew about a grain of wheat. And in telling it, Jesus was explaining that he must give his life for the sake of all people. And as his disciples, Jesus confirms here that they must too deny their own selves and live now for God's purposes. Matthew, Mark and Luke all reaffirm this message in their Gospels. In fact, we read a couple of weeks back in Mark chapter 8 that Peter was trying to rebuke Jesus when he affirmed to the disciples that he would be rejected put to death and raised to life three days later. Peter was caught up in this message of suffering and in fear of it, he rebuked Jesus. Jesus then told the crowd and disciples in verses 34 to 35, if anyone wants to come with me, he told them, he must forget self, carry his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his own life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and the gospel will save it. The message message Jesus was emphasising was that being his disciple is about self-sacrifice. In serving Jesus above all, You lose the world and its ways and instead you gain Christ in this lifetime and for an eternity in the next. In verse 26 of our reading today, Jesus said, Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am and my father will honour anyone who serves me. Here, Jesus makes a promise. Jesus promises that all who give up living for themselves 
Now for the sake of living for Christ, he saves. Jesus goes on in our gospel reading to talk about his suffering being part of God's glorious plan. With God himself being heard by the crowd affirming this in verse 28. I have brought glory to it and I will do so again. Whilst Jesus had not yet been seized or arrested because his hour had not yet come, that hour was now here, signalled by the Gentiles who wanted to come and see Jesus and be changed in their minds and in their hearts as they followed him. Now was the time that the good shepherd would bring all those scattered wandering and lost into his loving embrace through the sacrifice of his life on the cross. In our own lives, we understand that self-sacrifice is a part of how we love one another. In marriage, it's thinking of another person's feelings as a parent is putting the needs of a child above your own. It's going above and beyond for the sake of another and all in the name of love. But let me ask you today, how many of us can say that we do that out with our family circle or out with that selected few special friends we hold dear? out with all those that we know will appreciate the loving sacrifice that we give as we continue to deposit into the love bank. In other words, do we love others without expectation? When I was working in the design industry, I was rather taken with the fact that I was selected by my boss to work in Paris for a trade show that we were exhibiting at. I truly thought this was like a scene out of a chick flick. So I of course bought a whole new wardrobe for the occasion and it was only a few days trip. But this was a work trip. And anyone who has ever worked at a trade show will know that it's exhausting and the hours are long and it is anything but glamorous. Instead of the fancy lunch trips in Paris that I had thought of and that I had seen in these chick flicks, the reality was that we would take turns at the back in the staff room eating pre-packed sandwiches and cakes from the staff fridge. When the trade show was finally over, we had everything packed up to be shipped back to the UK and, well, it seemed a bit of a waste to bin all the extra stuff that we hadn't ate in our staff fridge. So we thought it was a good idea to pack them all up and give them to someone that we would see in need as we headed off ourselves for a late dinner that evening. Now, as we were sat in a restaurant, we spotted a gentleman who was begging on the street. I took it upon myself that I would be the one to go over and offer this man our leftover food. And if I'm honest, a lady in my early 20s, I think I really wanted to be that person because it was a good deed. So for more selfish reasons than good, to make myself feel good. But I was in for a bitter disappointment. The man looked through my carrier bags of now out of date items and picked out just two small items, not wishing to take the rest. I was a bit taken aback, if I'm honest. Well, why wouldn't he be grateful for everything that I had given him? I mean, he was in need after all. The reality was that the out-of-date produce that I was offering this man wasn't going to change his situation. He took what he felt he could benefit from 
and he did so graciously, not wishing to take the rest. Why am I telling you this? Because I learned so much from that experience. What I was doing wasn't anything in the way of self-sacrifice. I was giving with expectation. Yes, I was thinking of another. But in that moment, it was my feelings that I was more concerned with. I never once thought how this man would feel to be looking through out-of-date items offered by a girl half his age, dressed up as though she was on a set of a chick flick. I was more concerned about receiving that good feeling from a good deed that actually didn't ask anything of myself. When Jesus walked the earth, he gave us windows into the heart of God. We got to see the heart of God, the depths and lengths he goes to for you. Whether scattered, wandering or lost, he did it for you. When we devote ourselves to serving God, everything we do changes. Because no longer are we self-seeking for our own self-gain, but written on our minds and on our hearts is the good news that we serve a God of endless love and grace. The good news is that we can be that light. We are each capable of being a light in the darkness. And well, how awesome is that? That we are able to bring the hope of Christ to others. That's not for someone who knows the Bible better than you or someone who's been going to church more times than you have. When you come and see You become that light as you trust in Christ. He brings the Holy Spirit to move and to shape your life. So many people in this pandemic have been that light, haven't they? They've shown us what self-sacrifice looks like in action. Our NHS, saving lives, giving up time from their family and putting themselves at risk as they dedicate their lives to serving others. All those who have went above and beyond, carers, paid and unpaid, those in our doctor surgeries, those in our grocery stores, all those continuing to give us light in what has felt like a year of darkness. as we enter into this new season, one where we appreciate this new opportunity that we have and a time when we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Let us remember the self-sacrifice of a man nailed unjustly on the cross who willingly died all because he wanted you to be loved by him. His love bank is overflowing and he wants each of us to share it without expectation. We've come to see and now it's time to be that light through Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we come as the scattered, the wandering, the lost, We are here to come and see you gathered into your flock, into your family. You give us endless love and grace as we commit ourselves to serving you. Help us, Father, to share that good news and to be it to another. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Let us sing now. Lord, make us servants of your peace.
We continue now with our prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. God of love, source of mercy and compassion, weave your dream for the world into the fabric of our lives. Remove the scales from our eyes and lift the indifference from our hearts so that we may see your vision, a new reign of justice and compassion that will renew the earth. Transform our lives so that we may accomplish your purpose. Anoint us with your spirit of love that we might bring good news to the oppressed. Bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim release to the captive. Give us a new sense of urgency and a new commitment to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and visit those who live in isolation. Help us to reach out to those whom no one else will touch, to accept the unacceptable, and to embrace the enemy. Surround us with your love, fill us with your grace, and strengthen us for your service. We pray for the whole church, all the people of God, all respond to the call of Jesus, follow me. We pray for our nation and for all the nations in the earth, and for all who govern and judge. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely. Give them the joy of your saving hand and sustain them with your bountiful spirit. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for those who have been bereaved. Grant them your comfort and peace. We especially pray for those of our number and all known to us as a family and friends who are ill at home or in hospital. May they all be restored to full health. And may we respond to the call of Jesus to deny ourselves, to take up our crosses, and to follow in your footsteps. Make us your disciples of love and grace. Amen. Good morning, friends, and welcome to our service, and wherever you're viewing online or listening in our dial sermon service line. Preparations are now well in hand for the reopening of the Church for Public Worship on Sunday the 28th of March at 11 a.m., with a restriction on the attendance of 50 and the usual increased hygiene measures in place. We will also hold a short informal service on Monday, Thursday, the 1st of April, Good Friday, the 2nd of April, all at 7pm, and we continue as usual on Easter Sunday, the 4th of April, at 11am. It will be a delight to welcome all who are able to attend on these dates. The provision of a recorded service in the Dial of Sermon service will of course be delayed till later on on the Sunday afternoon. Please be patient as we investigate the possibility of live streaming for our services. On your behalf, can I thank the Hygiene COVID team who have worked so well and will continue to do so to ensure that the church is ready for these services. The final session of the Bible study will be held on Tuesday evening of next week at 7 p.m. This is a virtual meeting. We are not confined by space or distancing, so come along just as you are. And please email Jay to enrol and receive the joining instructions. As Jess had indicated in her sermon, that same night, the first anniversary of lockdown in the UK, the Presbytery of Hamilton invites you to share in the Light a Candle to Remember by lighting a candle at 7pm that night and to remember all those who have lost their lives during the last year and their friends and families. The Presbytery is also preparing a short video to mark the event and details should be available next week through a link on our Facebook page. Today, however, thanks to Neil for his reading, to Jade for a stimulating message of hope, 
And as always, to May and Neil for the artistic presentation and post-production work for the service. On a health front, I must tell you that Billy Martin is recovering at home following a spell in hospital. Margaret Ferrier, too, is progressing day by day. And I had a report, I spoke to her uh, on Wednesday, uh, and Tom was able to tell me on Friday that she felt well enough to get the makeup on and go for a short walk. So, great to have, have that news. We offer our prayers to all who are ill at present and wish them all a speedy recovery. To everyone, please stay safe, stay calm, stay praying, and God bless you all. whose hand has written the law of love upon our hearts. Fill us with peace from deep within and the commitment to live in harmony. And the blessing of God who loves, forgives and calls us home be with us all now and always. Amen.